Today we're joined by Hannah Dunn of uh, Mind Matters. Welcome to the show. <laughs> You've decided to create Mind Matters. Mm -hmm. How its full title is? Chain Mind Matters, and then the, the tagline, if you like, is change our words, change our world. Tell me what it's all about. So, on my journey um, from this place, um, as I said, I've decided to go and volunteer in a school. Um, before that, actually, when I had to say something wasn't right and how, what kind of place I felt like I was in, no part, despite the internal suffering I was feeling, no part of me wanted to tell, no part of me wanted to share that with anyone because I didn't want to be someone who had mental health issues or struggled with their mental health. Um, and even when I got to the point where I'd, I, I did have to, you know, I sat in the waiting room with the doctors, like, oh, my God, what what do I say? Like, what do I tell them? What do I... What are they going to think? I've got a baby. Um, and you don't want... You don't want... <laughs> especially when, on the face of it, I should have nothing to complain about. <laughs> you know, I... If you looked at, you know, the black and white of tick boxes. Um, um, so it started there. And then as I started reflecting, I, I had went to therapy. When I started kind of reflecting, also starting practices like meditation and breath work and things like that um and started reading and researching um and the first part of the research and thing and process that I went through went into a real overconsumption of information assuming and my bottom line was there's something wrong with me I've got this, I've got this, I've got all of these symptoms, so I've got this. Um, you know, I could have given myself 10 different mental health diagnoses with what I was experiencing. Um, and it, none of it made me feel any better. Um, and I know sometimes people do take, oh, well, comfort from knowing that there's there's uh, you know something which references the experiences that that they're having what I what and I don't take away from that at all uh, and I, obviously there needs to be intervention and obviously there is actual medical conditions but it's the word mental it's it just For someone who's considering something's not right, they're obviously not, they're not feeling great. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with real tricky emotions, real heavy emotions, which is creating for them not very positive thought patterns and not positive behaviors. So to then on top of whatever experience they've had and whatever's made, you know, made them feel that way, They've then got to deal with the fact that they may have mental health issues. Um, so that, that is where it really started for me in in that lay in that label. Um, I then went down the path of volunteering at school and starting my child trauma qualifications, which obviously brought up a lot for me uh, personally, um, but. Also, in the environment of a school, 
it was there is I can see that there's been great change over recent years into there is some education there on um emotional well being and mental health, you know, that 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 is that is evident. But again, as soon as we use the word mental, how that makes the children feel. Um, so the work that I was doing was through a company called Thrive, and which are fantastic. Um, they do um, a, a mix of neuroscience and attachment theory to establish that there's developmental gaps. So we need to refill them gaps to make this sturdy tower again. And um, I was working in a really underprivileged school um, with quite a lot of children who had adverse experiences who were struggling to be able to get into the zone of learning when in school. But the children who were getting the trauma-informed reparative care were the children who were kicking off. Um, that were being very disruptive, that were being very vocal about what was going on in their internal worlds, um, which made me sit and think, right, well, they're getting the care they need, which is great. And I don't take away from that in any which way. But they're actually getting their emotions out. They're actually discharging what's going on for them. What happens to the other children who having this the same kind of adverse experience at home but they're coming into school and going yeah I'm good and actually seeing school as their safe place mm. so they're doing anything possible to fit in which is a which was what how I how I navigated school so yeah everyone at school just said she's great like she's really well in class she's you know she but that's how I'd learn, you know, I was, you know, that's, um, school was, you know, a, a sanctuary in that, in that sense. Um, so when I came to think about mind matters um, and then started to think about, is it just my, is this just my interpretation of this or is this a... Um, would other people be on board with this? And I started talking to people about it. And they were like, oh my God, yeah, I've never thought about that. Uh, and I started to ask people, you know, just if you sit with it, if you sit with it and think of the word mental, what comes up? And how do you feel? So the words were institution, insane, crazy, unhinged. How do you feel? Tense, a bit defensive, anxious. Right, okay, so let's think about the word mind. What words come up for you when you think of the word mind? Curiosity, imagination, wonder, uh, calm, learning, wellness. And it gives me goosebumps even saying it. And when I came to write, well, how do you feel when you say the word mind? relaxed, open, you know, happy. These were the words that, that were coming were coming from people. And I was like, this is not just, this isn't just me, mm. <laughs> you know, making a flip on my experience. This is, it, which is part of it, 100%, but this is real, this is real. Um, and, you know, at my time of crisis, I reached out and went on charity re charity websites and things like that, um, which I found hugely resourceful. But there is a reason why Mind Charity, the leading charity, who's an amazing organisation, is not called Mental. If the charity was called, if Mental is a destigmatized word that's becoming accepting, that we're, that we're becoming accepting of. 
you know, all the leading charities are Young Minds. Again, a fantastic charity. Um, so it's because of them become aware of everything that is out there to do with mental health awareness. Um, I'm like, oh my gosh, there is so much resource and money being put into mental health awareness, which is great. But I also know that awareness only does one thing. It creates awareness. So we're creating awareness to mental health, which is fantastic. But we're not breaking what the word mental means to people. And that word has been around since the 1700s when the first psychiatric hospitals were, you know, commissioned to be built. And no one wanted to work in them. And the people who were in them or got put in them were associated with these words, you know, insane, crazy, and hinge. That if we've not, if we're in 2024 and we're still associating them words, then we're not going to make a radical change in our lifetime, in our children's lifetime, as to what that word means. So why don't we just change the word? Rather than create awareness, rather than try and break the stigma, which in itself is a very negative sentence, using negative language, why don't we just change the words? Um, it was a podcast that I listened to that because when I first started to think about it as well from a because it's very it's, I suppose it's quite poetic in a, in a sense so yes you can I could see mind matters being the more referred to term in a wellness well-being environment but how do you actually does it work in terms of changing it completely, you know, as, as, as a world talking about mind matters and not mental health? And I was like, well, so I started to think about more from a hospital and um, where interventions mm. needed, which 100% is. And, you know, I needed it at that time in, in, in my life. But I listened to one of Stephen Bartlett's podcasts with Dr. Omen. And he's one of the America's leading psychologists. And I must have listened to, God knows what number I was at, in terms of a self-development podcast list I was on and understanding really what I felt had happened for me. And he refers to it as brain health. He never uses the term mental and he certainly doesn't refer to his practice as being mental health. He's always talking about the brain. And it was the first podcast that I listened to that was related to my experience that I, I listened to and I could feel looser. Like, rela and I was more relaxed. Um, and... It did make me think, you know, I'm very much a believer that your body, your emotions, your mind are all interlinked, all interlinked. And but it's not just your brain or your that that's in charge of dealing with them emotions, your whole body is. So why is it the brain that we then attach this label to as being the the organ that handles emotion and so we've somehow labeled it as as, as mental it, it makes no sense to me anymore <laughs> um uh i think being able to go in and talk about the health of an organ as you would any other organ you know, we associate the heart with love. We don't in any medical way reference the heart as being anything to do with love. You know, so it 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 really I th just think we've got it wrong. I, the awareness is great and much needed, 
but trying to break the stigma around that word, I think, is impossible. Um, well, or yeah, certainly will take a lot longer time. Well, it won't. It also won't work. No, that, it won't. It can't work because the word mental has two meanings. Mm. One is a reference to a, the state. Yes. And one is a reference to crazy. Yeah. The, it has two very distinct meanings. Yeah. One is a medical term. Yes. Right. It is an actual scientific term. Yeah. And the other is an insult. Or, yeah. You know. Yeah. A hundred percent, but it goes. So, so it, you breaking the, that the stigma around that word can't change. Yeah. So you go. There's there is where I where I kind of met with it is you go the amount of resource that's being pumped into trying to break the stigma. So something else is happening at the same time. So so I don't know if this is me playing devil's advocate, mm-hmm. but it's not just the word that they're trying to break the stigma around Mm -hmm. with the mental health awareness and, you know, it's okay not to be okay, Mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah. It's great. It doesn't work for everyone, but it's great. Mm -hmm. But the the stigma, even if you change the word, I still have the same issues and I still have to sit in the doctor's waiting room. Mm Mm-hmm. And I still have to worry whether they're going to get involved social services. Mm -hmm. I still have to worry about all of those same things. Yeah. I still have to worry about somebody thinking I'm weak. All of those things won't change. Mm -hmm. So, so that 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 same movement of mental health awareness is okay to be okay. Mm -hmm. That will still need to go forward. Yeah. In the same way that it is. Mm. I think you're onto something with it. Would be a hell of a lot easier if it didn't have this stigma the word yeah running alongside it and i think albeit where i get to with kind of the weighing scales with it is if you were to maintain it as mental health i fundamentally believe you'll never break stigma around it but if you were to think about how neuro neurologically how many generations it would take to fundamentally change how people put the meaning. It's a long, long way in the future. If we're to change the language now, yeah, I completely get campaigning and everything would still be needed and still need to be prevalent like it is now because people are still going to have to go to the doctors, people are still going to have to do, Mm -hmm. you know, X, Y, and Z. However, I do think if, by changing it and the second half of what mind matters is is a business around prevention being the priority for children Mm -hmm. and the education system being different as to what they're educated on in terms of that whole mechanism and they're introduced to mind matters then we do break the cycle quicker of not as many people ending up in that situation of being in the doctor's office quicker than we would. I'm not saying, <laughs> you know, this is a this is a big, big piece of work, but we get to a improved destination faster than maintaining where we are now. So talk to me about that second point. Okay. So uh, Mind Matters, the social enterprise was born out of me being in the school environment and it being a right well the prevention needs to be the the thing how do we get every kid in the classroom to have some education on how it works internally, what happens with your emotions, feelings, how they change into thoughts, how they change into behaviours. The education that the children were getting through reparative care, through the the Thrive training and things I was doing, how do we get that to, you know, everyone? Um, The bigger dream of what the business is for me. At the moment, I've written 
a series of workshops um, based on a character called Wonder Phil, and he's filled with emotion. And it's all about how that mechanism works. Um, and it's about the choice of language. So for me, with especially at an adolescence point, the word anxiety is almost a fashion label. Mm -hmm. um, and ADHD and although very real, and I believe if I went down that route, I 100% <laughs> would, would be that way. Um, on social media, it's like, it's, it's, it's hyped up to almost, like I say, being fashionable to people are branding themselves as these things. And so it's about changing how we talk and the language that we choose to use. So for anxiety, it's a, <clears throat> anxiety is a thing. It's very, very real. I have had it to a debilitating degree. And I think, yes, obviously when it gets to that level, then it, it, it is. But fundamentally, for most, for a lot of people who are saying I am anxiety or my anxiety, firstly, we shouldn't be labeling it that you aren't your anxiety. It's something you're feeling inside. Um, and we shouldn't use I am because, again, you aren't it. And by saying them words, you, can, you are referring to yourself that you are. And so it will repeat that mm -hmm. cycle. So let's re-educate to it being normal to say, I'm feeling, not I am, not my, I'm feeling. And in the space of anxiety, the, the real base blocks are, I'm feeling worried and I'm feeling scared. And in the test out of me, me doing this in terms of, like I did, like I mentioned earlier with the mental and mind, right, how do you feel? If I've gone to someone, if I came to you and said, I am anxious, it's a very closed sentence. I'm almost not inviting you in mm -hmm. to partake in helping me with that experience. I'm going, I am, I am saying, I am it. Mm. Almost. Whereas if someone comes to you and says, I feel scared. I don't know <clears throat> if you agree, but the, the sensation in my body when I say that is completely different to if I say I am anxious. And when I've kind of tested this out, the feeling from the other person is open. Right, okay, well, how do I help with that? Mm -hmm. What's caused that? And we live in such a fast-paced life that we've, with technology being fantastic but crippling at the same time, we're losing the very thing that makes us different from VR, that makes us different from AI. And that is authentic human connection and being able to openly communicate about what's going on for us. Um, and that's definitely something I've learned about myself and something that I almost feel like a walking contradiction because that's, that's learning that I'm now going to carry f for the rest, you know, it's going to get, as we talked at the beginning of the, at the beginning of this, along with the negative talk, that's going to take practice to be, um, more open. I'm not saying it's the same for everyone, but it is, there's, the correlation between the statistics we're looking at for young people with anxiety and on medication and awaiting medical referrals is scary. And there isn't, there's no way that that doesn't marry to the fact that how unconnected we are as human beings. So for me, mind matters from an educational point of view is understanding the internal worlds, 
and just being able to, and what is open communication? What is human connection? And encouraging that in the school environment. Um, you know, a, a scary thing I heard just before Christmas at a get together with people was, I don't know why we're teaching children to write anymore. I don't, children don't need to write. We don't, we don't write as adults anymore. We don't need to. Why are we teaching them to write? And it's shocked me because actually I've learned that how your brain, your brain learns best from what it sees its things do. So when you input information into a third party object, you don't get the same sense of it's come from you as you do if you if your brain sees you write it. So there are some fundamental basics of what's what makes humans so great that we're moving away from. And I don't think there's any getting away from the fact that that does tie in with the amount of technology use, does tie in with the lesser family time, lesser community feeling. And I do think that like we need to start almost getting back to that, take the technology for the amazingness that it is when we need it. But should we be spending eight hours on our screens a day? No, mm. it's not healthy. Um, also, when I came to need help and resources, I was like, right, so I'm 30, 30 odd years old. Go out there, right, there's all this stuff, which is amazing. There's all these wellness apps to help me. There's Calm, I love Fern Cotton, Happy Place. There's, um, there's so much out there, yoga, meditation, journaling, which are all amazing, amazing skills. But what we're doing, what we're, how we're at the moment is we've got a generation of adults who are crashing and burning and then going, right, what can, <laughs> what is there to help out there? And yes, there are all these resources and it's fantastic. But it's like, well, I sat there going, why wasn't this as obligatory for me to learn as it was for me to learn about the World War? Because it should have been. Me learning to regulate my nervous system should have been as important as any third party information that was put into my brain at school. Mm -hmm. um, so the yes, at the moment, Mind Matters, social enterprises, you know, a series of workshops and it's about getting out to the schools and companies. Um, from a company point of view, um, Mind Matters companies, I, I, again, I think there is a big piece in re-educating in the workplace how we speak to each other. Mm -hmm. And leaders within the workplace seeing benefits of that because if we're more open and we're more connecting within the workplace in terms of communication, and we're thinking about our minds and we are less reactive, but we're responding to one another. That's generally when the good stuff happens. It's generally when the good ideas come forward for, you know, anything within a business, new ideas, new ways of doing things. So I think it's a, mass, a massive piece, but for, from the schools, I think these wellness apps that we have, there should be one that is used in schools that gives children, because I've thought about it as well from the point of these workshops and making mind matter schools, which is, uh, you know, an ambition of mine, there will be children who come to them workshops who haven't got the confidence to partake. Mm -hmm. So it's like, right, well, how, how do we get everyone in this? Um, and if there was an app, like there is adult wellness apps that has it all there, and the children 
had to spend an amount of time learning the skill sets that was on that app. But they didn't necessarily have to do it in a workshop. They didn't necessarily have to do it in a classroom. Mm -hmm. It could all it could actually be their sanctuary at home. Mm -hmm. And they were incentivized to do it, you know, be it with, I don't know, a frap voucher or a cinema ticket or whatever it might be. Once they've accumulated enough time on them activities which connect them to themselves um, is 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 the big dream with that. So we've got mind wellness. Mm -hmm. But so I'll, uh, I've got to connect you with this organisation that I work with. But they, um, it's Health Med Wellness. Okay. And they have, I mean, they, they have an extraordinary platform and they're, you know, going all over the world, really. But they... That's the dream. Yeah. <laughs> so they, I've got to connect you with them because, so they, they look at all different areas of wellness. So the same, uh, it's more like an integral mm -hmm. spirituality kind of perspective. Yeah. So you have mind wellness, mm -hmm. physical wellness, mm -hmm. spiritual wellness, mm -hmm. Uh, community wellness, professional wellness, yeah. educational, you know. Yeah. And they're like all of these pieces. And then they, you know, so they do like a um, a test and see where you are, where your parameters are. Mm -hmm. And then you have like courses and like interactive courses and everything that you work on so that you pull them all up at the same time. And they, they're currently working in the organizational space, but it seems like put you two together, you could oh, yeah. wonderful things can happen. Amazing. That would be... Fantastic. Um, I do think another barrier, f a personal thing for me in entering into this has been the the more the merrier with it. And let's, mm -hmm. let's get as many people talking about it. Let's get as many people on board with it. Having been in a very competitive environment before. Um, so that's been a massive learning thing um, for me. But I it's like that's where we need to get to collectively is being is working together more um so yeah I th I th like i say that that sounds fantastic and something that i'd be interested in looking at myself but it's something that yeah 100 mm percent -hmm. we need to start applying to the schools i think it's a fantastic idea mm. Um, changing, changing, not just, I mean, changing the language, it's such an important piece. Mm -hmm. Like, and to hear you explain it and go through it and just give the examples of just sit with these words mm. and now sit with these words. The anxiety one was particularly effective, mm. just to say. That's it. been this, that's been the consensus yeah, of the feedback. Was particularly effective. Because I think with the word mental, the people who are most touched with that are the people who've experienced it. Mm -hmm. So if, I've, as an example, as I've said, I've got two older sisters, love them both to pieces, both really strong women, successful women. I've gone to them with this and they're like, <laughs> what's she on with now in this like spiritual journey that she's decided to take upon herself? Um, because they, you know, they they haven't experienced the same the same thing. But if I speak to anyone who has, they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Why, you know, that's exactly it. Why we're not doing it. Um, and, you know, there's the other correlation I found, which I found extraordinary, was I actually chose to get into construction because it was like the leading industry in the world. And for me, my nervous system wanted security and something that was going to make me find security from a you're never going to lose your job point of view and security from a you're going to earn good money point of view because neither of them things I'd had. So that's wise decision. That's, a, that's the decision that I made. And construction has continued to be the leading industry until, very, until recently um, when technology and IT took over alongside coaching. So they're now the two world leading industries. And I go, 
there's no there's a there's a relationship there you know the fact that we're using all this technology and becoming less disconnected is causing then as humans to make this massive investment into coaching to to get that connection back um I'm just completing my NLP and coaching and timeline therapy qualification. And it is, there's so many out people out there doing the same. And I'm like, the, the reason I went down that path is because I didn't have that connection in myself. So I needed the help of a coach. And I also then was intrigued to learn about it. Mm -hmm. And so, so I go, there's, there's not there's a huge correlation there. Um, and NLP, um, which is Neuro Linguistic Programming, um, which is all about communication and how we, pro how we, and the language we use and things like that. Um, and I, it, it just, this is just stuff we should be taught, you know. Uh, it's just, I can't believe I know more about Egypt than I do about being able to process my own nervous system uh, you know at 33 years old which I would have been at the time uh, that that my nervous system just went mm -mm, we're done um and so yeah it's very much come from a I don't want anyone to feel how I felt so what can I do to help that and I never want my little boy to go through what I went through so what can we do to help that? And that's where it's come from. Kind of putting them two things together. How old is he now? Five? Four. Four going on, 14. They say that what you experience with them at four is an indication of your, te your early teenage years. So for me, it's, mummy, you're not my best friend. Oh. <laughs> you're not my favorite person. Um, which I'm like, great, can't wait till you're 14. And that that's a whole different sentence that breaks my heart even more. But um, yeah, he's a wonderful little boy. And, you know, he's already had his own adversity in how the dynamics between me and his dad have, have been. Mm hmm you know, and I can't, I can't undo that. Just like I can't undo other things. How old was he? What two, two and a half? No, it was it was six. It was nine months old when we when we separated. So he doesn't consciously he doesn't know any he doesn't know any different. So let's talk for a second about campaigning. Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, you've got mm. change of language. Yeah. And on the other hand, you've got the work in schools. Yeah, and companies. Schools and companies. Yeah. So, are you? Uh, is this all one campaign, or are you separating those two things out? No, it's all, it's all falling under mind matters. Um, it's it's going to be kind of a once the message is out there. Um, and we, uh, 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 we've gone through like the launch as such. It's, I guess, what what kind of snowballs from the conversations where where it goes as to what. Um, I definitely I can see them being completely two separate things. Um, and but are you working with other charities as far as? The the language part is concerned. Not yet. So my, I'm just having my websites in the final throws of being done. Um, because the advice I got was like, don't go out there kind of cold calling people with just your message because, you know, firstly everyone, everyone's busy, mm -hmm. you know, and um, so you're going to need something to grab people's attention. So hence why I was like, right, well, I'm going to do a video. Um, and create a website around Mind Matters. But I'm hoping when I reach out to charity, other charities, other organisations, and there's something like, you know, quite a raw video for myself, it'll get noticed and I'll be able to make them connections to 
start having those conversations. I have spoken to some local charities in Doncaster. You know, and everyone's kind of the same. So it's it's really funny. Well, it's not funny. It's not funny at all. But I've been sat on this for three years whilst, you know, this is this is the this period of my life has been happening and not really spoken about it. So I'm but I've written about it. <laughs> so I've got like fifteen notebooks full of different alliterations of words, what words mean, historically where did mental come from, you know, all sort of what it could mean for the future, all these all these things. Um and was so scared to talk about it to anyone. Um why? That's my own thing as to um not wanting to be rejected. Yeah, so I would only really put something out there once I knew in myself that 100% nailed on this is fine. <laughs> um, and, then, and then that inner confidence is there anyway, or I wouldn't put it out there at all. Um, so my nervous system is all over the shop at the moment because it's like, firstly, you're going into uncharted territory, but you're choosing to do it with your soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we are not comfortable about that at all because <laughs> it's not something you've ever done before um, so can we please slow down but then every other part of me is like you've been sat in this place for such a long time we've got to get it out there now we've got to, we've got to move away from this we've got to turn this into something um, so there's a very urgent urge, a sense of urgency with it but it's also fueling the urgency that anyone who I have spoken to about it has been like, oh my God, like, yeah, it makes, it makes complete sense. Mm. Um, and even some people who, you know, if I'm going to be 100% honest, when we're upstairs and I started talking about it, kind of sensed your face like, And it's not until you really kind of go into, and I do find if I say with someone, right, well, just sit with this, and mm. how does that be? that's when people are like, oh my gosh, yeah. But um, I've been to a few events where I've turned up at the events a bit of a nobody, really, compared to the people who were there and just started talking t to people about it. Um, and it has been a, like just a, yeah, so I'm like, mm. but flip side of it has been, that makes complete sense, but gosh, is your message going to have to be powerful to, to hit the mark with people, to hit the mark with, for it to be, you know, a bigger thing. And don't get me wrong, a few people um, have gone have disregarded it and said, so I did a presentation um, about Mind Matters Schools and um, uh, and the Mind Matters campaign. And the initial response was, well, you ne you're never going to change the term mental health. That's impossible. Which inside the little girl was like, didn't need that rejection there but the other part was like watch, watch me, me. <laughs> um and there's another there's there's a few others that have said you know kind of just you've been through a lot just get an all just get a normal job and just like art like uh, but I go, no, you know, no. And and have said it's impossible. Uh, but I go, no, because it's generally the people who've been through crap who've changed, who've changed it into something mm -hmm. positive. Um, you know, I've done a lot of reading of peop people um, as I've gone through this and their stories and things, and it's generally some pain, 
some adversity that sent them down a different track of wanting to put it to good. And I do believe if you don't try, like I feel like if I don't put this to something positive, it, I don't think it goes away. I think you, you grow around it. Mm -hmm. You create new experiences that tip its tipping scale. Um, so I'm like, I've got, a, I've got a tipping scale to do here. And this, this, this is that. And I don't believe it is impossible. I think, you know, in, in our, in our lifetimes, we've, we've changed the word spastic. You know, mm -hmm. um, you think about, uh, and I, you know, that's got a very personal connotation for me because my, my nephew has cerebral palsy. Um, and the way that term was used when I was certainly at primary school, remembering that term being used. Um, and even now, it's a, it's a horrible word, you know, it's a horrible word. I've got, like I say, I've got emotions attached to it because of family, but... Um, there was a reason well, that was, was changed. It was a medical word first, yeah. and then it's because of because of kids, yeah, because yeah. kids are hilarious, yeah, it just became a, an, a, a horrific a term of yeah. abuse, yeah. And then well, well, the same with mental, I suppose. But you go with mental. It wasn't a medical term. Well, first. it started as a. It's it, you know it's as a, a diagnosis. Yeah, so it's it's y the word. Um. But I think you've got a, a slightly different slant on it. It's a lot older. So the fact that it's been used since like the 1700s, you've got that ingrained as to the meaning of it. I think the meaning of the word mental has always been less medical than um, the, you know, crazy mm -hmm. side of it. I think it's always been weighted more to that. Um, whereas I think you're right, the word, say, I don't know, I've struggled saying it, but the word spastic started off very medical and then, then got its connotation, um, but was quickly changed. So it's like, well, why are we sitting on this word that we've had since the 1700s when we brought a word in quite, quite modernly, quite recently? It didn't work and was causing a problem, so we got rid of it. I think I think I think it's just the hugest but simplest change that could have just a real ripple and wave effect as to how people do feel and think. And don't get me wrong, um, you know the fairy tale part of me is not going. Oh, I, this is this is the um, resolve of <laughs> it's not that, but I think it it. it creates a completely different impact as to how people who have had their challenges or um, or, or haven't feel and think about it, but certainly from a preventative point of view, it's, it's massive for, the, for, for kids. Because in essence, for our kids, the, the fundamentals of what the mind is, the wonder, the curiosity, the... They're the very things we need to be keeping alive as long as possible through education for us to continue to be different from AI, from VR, because, gosh, the rate of pace that's going at, they're smarter than us in no time. You know, it's, it's, it's keeping what makes us different from all that. And how do we keep that alive? And nurture it in ourselves, but preventively in the generations to to come. How, what brings you peace? Uh, uh, spending time with my little boy, hundred percent does. Um, outside of that. At the moment, being 100% honest, not a great deal. <laughs> um, yes, I have, I have things that make me feel peaceful. I love walking. I love hiking. I love being in the outdoors. Nature does bring 
meetings and also rain checks means thinking you are this in this doesn't stop me from wanting to make an impact mm. in this <laughs> um but um yeah I th- like uh, through various points of this i think what i've developed through this time is a great deal of self awareness and i know I know my parts quite well, I think, now. But the state I'm at at the moment is, they're all still kicking off a little (laughs) bit, (laughs) or a lot in some instances, because of the nature of what I'm doing. So the idea is that, you know, that progressing and me building trust back with my parts, um... And also, you know, being in a healthy relationship um, will, because I I don't get the whole, this is completely going off tangent, but I don't get the whole, you have to be 100% okay on your own before you can be with somebody else. I don't buy into that. I I like the idea. It's horseshit. Yeah, because it's not what we're meant to do. It's not what we are here to do. You know, we are social Mm -hmm. beings here to procreate, you know, in the real simple, Mm -hmm. simple terms. But that in itself is the balance that needs bringing back. We've gone from generations of the woman at home, the male provider, the the male who goes out to war, the, you know, the man who doesn't talk, which has its own... all of the repercussions that that has, to then the generation that I'm in of, well, no, you, you should, you've got to be so grateful and for the rights that you now have. You've got to go and take on the world with them rights and still do all the stuff that the generations of women did before you as well. Mm-hmm. And that's put women predominantly in the state of hypervigilance, stress, trying to maintain all that. It's impossible, possible. But also very disconnected from the men, them the 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 men. And also I think a lot of the struggles at that side of it is the you know, we've got to bring that balance back. We both need each other. Mm-hmm. And whether one's comfortable cooking and the other one's happy in a boardroom or whether one's happy doing the school ones and the other one's... We still need each other and the balance needs to be there. Um, whereas I, th- I think at the m- it's gone... Shh, shh, and now we've, we need to find somewhere back mm-hmm. here. Um, and... You know, that's that's a learning from me as well. Like, I would have definitely... Because I've been brought up with this, like, independent woman. You know, you need to be self-sufficient and all of these things before you can even be, look, you know, looked at, if you like. You know, it just creates such an unhealthy dynamic. Um, but I'd have definitely readopted that mindset when me and my partner separated. No, I'm okay on my own. I'll be, I'll be fine on my own. I'm absolutely not, you know. I'm, I'm not, uh, and I've got no, I've got no qualms in saying that, you know. I don't think you're meant to be, uh, and I'm too far the other scale. So I, know I'm aware I have a very anxious attachment style because of experiences. So I, I just need to like be aware of that uh, moving forward. Um, and probably have that desire a bit more than what I should have. But I think that desire being there is 100% help, healthy and necessary. Um, you know, I, d- I don't think we are meant to be on our own. Uh, and it's not, the, it's not the dynamic I want, you know. I want Teddy to know his mums are strong. 
woman uh, and has put her skill set and her attributes to use to make a good outcome and a difference. I also want him to see me happy and at peace and joyful and all and in love. You know, it's it's a it's a huge thing. We're we're kind of living in fear a lot of the time. Which then obviously doesn't make much space for the love stuff when you're living in fear all the mm-hmm. time. Um and so I definitely want him to see that. Um, you know, I definitely don't want him to see his mum as like, you know, an angry, resentful man hater, you know. It's not it's not the road I'm going down, but yeah, I've gone off tangent there, but um yeah, I, def- I, d- I don't buy into the, you need to be on your own. You need to be okay on your own before you're attached to someone. I just think it's just nonsense. Yeah, I don't think it's particularly healthy. I mean, to be at peace, to be comfortable, to you know, trust God mm. and the universe, that's one thing. Yeah, yeah. But to be like, no, this is perfect, this is ideal, this is my life. No, it's not. No. <laughs> no. Um, and like I say, I'm too far... I'm probably not in that happy pl- equilibrium of going, ah, oh, the universe is going to bring me in when when I'm most tired. I'm very much like, no, I've been on my own too long now. Like, and I, I, I want that experience. I want that love. And uh, and so I do, I do get into the right way. Well, you, you love yourself, and you know, I, I, there is something in it, but there's a ba- like I say, there's a balance to it. So I guess to close out mm-hmm. the show. Imagine that this, your answer to this next question has been watched by every single man, woman, and child in the world today. Mm-hmm. Whatever they're going through, wherever they are. Yeah. What's your message? That. They matter, their mind matters, the person who's sat next to their mind matters. Collectively, we all matter. Um, And we need to be applying more focus on not fixing or changing something that doesn't feel right, but just caring for ourselves and our minds more. And certainly ensuring, especially around children, we're aware and conscious of the words we're using they have monumental impact like monumental Um, I know we grew up in a generation of sticks and stones will break your bones but words will never hurt me like our names will never hurt me basically that was the tagline and it's completely the other way around you know someone comes and hits me with a stick and gives me a graze. That's going to be gone in two weeks. Probably won't think about it a couple of weeks after that. Never think about it again. Mm. Someone comes and says, you failed. You are a failure. Your mind, because of how a human brain grabs that, and that's the, that's the, that's the, one, that's the one it holds on to. Um... But, I mean, even in a softer sense, in a less magnified sense, the simple thing of not I am or my, you know, all these wonderful sensations we feel as a human, they're all temporary. They're not who we are. We just feel them based on 
the experiences that they've had. Um, and yeah, so it's just being, it's, it's being conscious of the language around children, the words we use, and also just making a conscious effort to connect, you know, with, with everyone in everything. Um, uh, and I know my experience is more exasperated. I know there'll be people out there that are like, well, I do have a healthy gender relationship and, you know, we're, we're good. I, like, I'd, there, will be, there will be families out there that, that are in them dynamics, and that's, like, fantastic. But there are, sadly, I think more that aren't, and increasingly more that aren't. And not in a, oh, there's abuse there or there's something fundamentally wrong. I think we are just becoming more disconnected. So in them, even healthy family environments and healthy homes, it still could be the consideration as to, you know, have we, have we actually talked mm. in a certain period of time? Um, you know, when was the last time we all played a board game? You know, it just... We're moving for, I think, even in, it affects everyone, I think. This, this um, getting back to human connection, being aware of the words we use, I think it affects everyone. It's not just adversity or people who are not in great situations. I think everyone can be more considerate, like I said. Um, yeah, I think, as well, I think, especially from a husband and wife point of view, and I do. I've done it with my friends, so I'm, I'm changing. I'm changing that. But I used to call my friends, and it'd be, "You okay? I'm fine." I said, I, "You know that that's the automatic." Forgot what the I do know the actual word for it, but the associated response to give, and so we react and we give it. Mm -hmm. um, and fun, when people say they're fine. Not that that should be concerning, but they're not saying they're great. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some, you know, there's something that could be making their experience more positive. And I know we all can't be having a great time all the time, but um, if someone's just fine all the time and hasn't got anything to expand on that, then they're not probably heading for the greatest place in years to come. Um, whereas I've tried to start saying, rather than "Are you okay?" Because I think you get a yes or a how are you, I'm fine. I've started to try and say, how are you feeling? Mm. And I have noticed that when I ask that question, even if people aren't 100% honest with how they're, with their answer, they definitely pause. Mm -hmm. You don't get that, yeah, I'm fine. Do, 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 do. You know, I'm on my autopilot doing what I do, watching my humanness do whatever it's doing. Um, um the, and it, I think that it's getting us to pause and respond and, and ch you know, like check in with our own. Yes, Rob, you know, I'm not suggesting we all like revert back to community living and all embrace a wildly spiritual life, <laughs> you know. It, but again, it's about balance. It's, it's, it's finding a bit more balance that makes us healthier and more connected. I hope. That wasn't a short message to give anyone, but <laughs> 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 um, the, the, the thing I, I, I will say a thousand words when I could say 10, which is what meant as men um, writing my website has been like a wildly <laughs> hard experience <laughs> to try and condense um, what you're trying to get across. That's just a thought that mm -hmm. I've had. You're a person of faith. Mm -hmm. And through your experience, and presumably because you're a person of faith, also because you believe you have a purpose, mm -hmm. you are now drawn to put your experience in a certain place. Yeah. To serve as many people as you possibly can. Yeah. In as much time as the universe gives you. Yeah. 
get out from isn't yours to control. Mm -hmm. Your role is the input mm -hmm. for you to try as hard as you can mm -hmm. for as long as you can reasonably try. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But it's fine. Because it's n the outcome isn't yours. Your mm -hmm. job is to try your hardest. Yeah. And if on that path, God decides to end the world tomorrow, still that was still a good path. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Th I don't. <coughs> Fundamentally, for me, this is a lifelong thing. In mm. whatever way and capacity. It will always be um, part of my purpose. Um, and I'm sure that in time, me practicing what I'm practicing, and I'll be more at peace with what you've said in there. Oh, if it doesn't mean life, it's fine. Um, at the moment, I am too much weighted on, you know, this needs to be something to turn these scales around. Um, but I'm aware of it, <laughs> which they say is the first biggest <laughs> step. Uh, and I am, like, consciously... But it's not even, I've not even started with it yet. But I am consciously aware as, as to this, this isn't your everything. You know, as, 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 um, uh, and your worth isn't tied to this succeeded or not, which is a tricky place for me at the moment because, because it's like, I feel like I'm putting my heart and soul out there, then your I go with the... Worth, um, your worth is tied to the effort you put in. Yes. Yes. Not the outcome. Yeah. Which, yeah. Yes. It's genuinely so interesting listening to you go through each of the different elements because there's so many different things happening at the same time. Mm. Yeah, so my yeah. nervous system's like, what the... Yeah, there's so <laughs> many, it's so many different things because you've got a relationship that at that particular time that you were in it, you needed to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So that was the correct decision mm -hmm. for yourself. Yeah. Then you've got a little boy watching or who could have watched how a woman was being treated mm -hmm. and then grown up to be an mm -hmm. imitation of that bad behavior. Mm -hmm. So then you had no choice but to get out because that was also tiger mom or not. That was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And then you've got the trauma of the divorce process, which has ended. Mm -hmm. And then you've come out on the other side of that. And you've gone, well, that was good. That was good. That's over, so that's good. But the honest truth is, this bit isn't hard. Mm. And like logically, they're all nice and neat thought processes mm -hmm. and you could come out on the other side and go okay but that wasn't fun mm. and this isn't this isn't fun mm -hmm. right now yeah because this isn't my I this isn't my story this is yes. my fairy tale yeah yeah so exactly. i need my fairy tale is incomplete but i think it's the it's rewriting so what i do remember is coming out of the last day of of um, proceedings and just feeling numb very not like nothing like I didn't feel, didn't feel anything um, and going to a coffee shop and um, the woman behind the counter had a t-shirt on 
it said, your future is in your hands. And I sat down and Natasha Benningfield played a song called Unwritten and it's all about how today's your first page, mm -hmm. you know. And, and it's my f it was my favourite song when I was 16. Um, or four, 14, 16 time she brought that out and it's my favourite song then. And, you know, for me it's a re-education process to that little girl that the fairy tale's just looked a bit different now. Um, but she, she, she ain't going to be happy overnight. <laughs> like, you know, after everything that's happened, she's like, I don't know if I trust you or not. So until, I, you know, until we've got that trust, then I'll, 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 I'll carry on kicking off a little bit. But um, but I can also, you know, I'm, I'm conscious of it, and I'm not walking into situations and picking up signs that are. Oh my God, this is the worst thing that happened, and there's no hope. There's no, there's no. Everything's just gonna be hunky dory and all fall place, and you know that cynical mm -hmm. voice coming in. Um. That's, you know, I'm not there. So I'm like, as uncomfortable as it is, and God, day to day, this is uncomfortable. You know, I used to go, I used to feel uncomfortable in a workplace until the day ticked over from two years and I knew they couldn't get rid of me, <laughs> like, easily. Like, that's just how, you know, my brain's naturally wired up for, for whatever reason. So then to go, Pat, I'm going to completely retrain. And I'm going to volunteer to not earn any money initially. Then that voice was like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> like, you are not doing this. We can't be seen to be not earning any money. And, uh, and so that was loud then. Um, and also it was upsetting because, you know, a lot of the kids, I was... Um, nurturing and helping you know been through similar things to what I remember and I was going through my own therapy and so that yeah I was emotionally really tough so then to go starting nurturing this idea and we're writing it all down and then and we're going through the trials to the divorce at the same time and then once that's done we're going right well we're, we're you know we're gonna we're making something of this because this is I couldn't get it out of my head like, it was just there all the time. Um, and so then go, right, well, that's what we're doing. Again, that voice is like, what do you mean that you're doing something that has no secure, no, I can't see the security right now. Like, so, no, because <laughs> that's how I would have, I would have lived. Oh, right, okay, so now you're going to take, a job whilst you're doing this and you know three weeks ago if you had told me that I was going to be here you know I came in to just have a few photos done for my website and then within two to three weeks I've co-worked here actually thought it's really good because you've got a really creative guy there in George and you've got a really business guy there in Ryan so I'm going to just set myself around these people for a bit that's how my brain worked to then be like oh get a job with Ryan and then walk in today, oh, do you want to do a podcast with this really successful lawyer? He's amazing. You're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's, um, so, yeah, there isn't that, like, peaceful, calm, tranquility going on right now. I don't expect there to be um, at this moment in time. And I'm building in time for it by doing the practices that I know bring it to me. But day to day, yeah, my system's a bit like, oh, I need to know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, the ego does kick in when, you know, it thinks that you should be living in a certain house at a certain age. And, you know, we went down that path. And, you know, you're retraining, you're living in an apartment with a child. That was never on the script. Um, 
so I think if I sat here and went, oh, yeah, I'm all peaceful and zen now. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not. But I don't expect myself to be either. And that's a journey for me to get there. Um, by having the faith and practicing. And, but again, it's going to be a journey to get there because that whole culmination of stress didn't happen overnight. It wasn't tied to one singular experience. You know, it, it went all the way back to childhood. So I'm not going to... I'd say be some superhuman or there'd be something wrong with you in that sense because you could just go, oh, I know why I'm here. <laughs> 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 you know, I can surround myself with more people who are and I think that does innately rub off on your energy. Um, but personally on my own, that's I'd be wildly naive if I thought that that was the place mm. I was going to get to overnight. Um certainly in control of it in the sense of I have my practices to keep it keep in a in a place and I can find a peaceful place for me and myself when I you know when I need to. Um but I've got to that place from being on high levels of anxiety medication and not know you know. So yeah. I have kind of more realistic expectations, so you know. I'm already far away from where I was. I think where my friends would say, they'd be like, oh, the old Hannah's not bad. You know, the confident. It's weird because I would have always been really empathetic and I'd do anything for anyone and I'd be very caring. I've always had an affinity for kids, dogs, you know. <laughs> That's always been part of me, but I would have had this bravado, like I work in a male environment, I, you know, and I don't give a f about that. And, you know, there would have been that air somewhere uh, and they're like, oh, that, that part of Hannah, like the fun part of Hannah's, not back yet um and I agree with that I d you know it, I don't think but again I go I think it's 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 a journey for me to get there and I'm now at a place where I'm not willing to put on a sh to, to fake it mm -hmm. and I think if I'm a brutally honest a lot of the times in the past I would have been faking it I would have in the moment felt like I was having fun and things like that, but underneath, like there was a lot of anxiety and uncertainty, you know. Um, and so now I'm at a point where I'm like, I do, I do want to have fun, and I do have fun, but I want my confidence to come from a a really authentic place. Mm. Um. I've just got to balance that as not being too hard on myself. Um, so, yeah. Spring to summer. <coughs> Which is a pleasure. Mm, yes, me too. Thank you very much. Thank you.